You were in the church. Mm -hmm. You had uh, same-sex tendencies. I guess you were trying to hide them. Yeah. And then you came out. Yeah. And then you got into a, uh, a would you say, a gay affirming church? Well, gay, gay affirming church, that's and right. And then it was your job to kind of convince men and women that it was okay. Right, and to try to convince myself, sure. Yeah, and try to convince <laughs> yeah. yourself. Okay, yeah. so pick it up from there. It's been one realization after another. I mean, like a lot of people who have dealt with this, at an early age, I realized I'm attracted to the same sex. Yeah. Then I realized there is a God and there is a way to know God. I heard the gospel. Then having been born again, I realized that I still had same-sex attractions and that it wasn't God's will to yield to them. And then I realized that I wasn't satisfied with just pretending I didn't have those feelings and finally just came out and said, I'm a gay man, this is who I am. But then I also realized again, but I'm still a Christian and I yeah. don't want to give that up. So I thought, what to do? And that's when I heard about the pro-gay church and the pro-gay interpretation of the Bible. Now, that was back in 1978, and mm. at that time, the Metropolitan Community Church was about the only game in town if you were looking for a gay-affirming church. And uh, so I went there, heard the pro-gay interpretation of the Bible, tried to embrace it, actually became involved with the church and eventually got on staff with them. So I was very committed not only to gay activism, mm -hmm. but also to converting the church's ideas about homosexuality and trying to persuade the church that we need a reformation by which we abandon our homophobia and declare that not only does God love gay and lesbian people, but he also approves of homosexuality. And for the first part of that's true. He loves that part's true. everyone. Like Landon was saying, you know, everybody welcome, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So were you conflicted? at all, even as you were trying to persuade others that this was okay to be gay yeah, and Christian? Yeah, Joni, a lot more than I wanted to let on. Wow. You know, um, I, I would have occasionally friends who had known me when I was in the church earlier come and confront me and say, Joe, you're openly gay, you're promoting this pro-gay Christianity. Mm -hmm. Do you really believe this or do you just want to believe it? And I had my answers ready yeah. and I was very defiant and very, oh yeah, I know who I am and so yeah, forth. And they'd walk away and then I'd go home and get yeah. drunk. Was it just to, to drown all the help pumps. you justify? I mean, and somehow it helped justify where you were. Oh, you can... look, if you've got an issue in your life that you're not ready to submit to God, but you have enough light to know that that's outside of God's will, mm -hmm. you want to see if you can find a way to come to terms with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for me, if I could just convince myself that the Bible condoned what I was doing, mm -hmm. then I could finally say, all right, I can be at peace with this. And believe me, this is going to be the last battlefield what the Bible says, not yes. conversion therapy, not right. same-sex marriage. Right. What does the Bible say or what does it not say? And you watch the trend in the not too distant future. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, it's going already to be happening. to make yeah. it not only unacceptable, but eventually even criminal to give the full counsel of God, which yes. is why we have to take this up as a challenge. It is a hill right worth now. dying on. So, mm -hmm. okay, let's find out about the moment where God January 1984, a lot of people were praying for me. This is why I say anybody who knew Joe Dallas in the late 70s, early 80s had every right to give up on him. That was the logical thing to do, but people yeah. did not. Thank God the prayers so kept going. If it could reach me, it could reach anyone. That's good. There were conversations I had with believers who lovingly confronted me. And most important, there was my own grounding in the Word of God. Right. When people are well grounded in the Word of God, it is pretty darn hard to just push that down. Mm -hmm. And so eventually I had to realize Realize everything in my life is going perfectly. I loved my job. I loved the, the way I was living. I loved my social life, my apartment, everything. And yet I had this nagging unease. I am not in God's will. Mm, yeah. Does that matter? And then the moment of clarity came. I have tried to convince myself that this is God's will because at a critical point in my life, I gave myself permission. I feel very strongly about this. People don't just, oh, I don't know, stumble into sin. There's a decision made. I hereby give myself permission to wow. use porn or yeah. to flirt with that coworker or to take that drink or take that drug or what have you. I had given myself permission. Mm -hmm. And when I put it before God that night, I remember very plainly the Spirit of God speaking to me saying, you know, Joe, the sin in your life is not homosexuality. That is the fruit of the sin. The sin in your life is you made a God out of Joe Dallas. And out of that sin sprang all the other sins that are manifest in your life. So I am calling you to repent of that, mm -hmm. not just homosexuality. Now, repenting of homosexuality was relatively simple compared to repenting of the selfishness and the self-idolatry. That 
I'm still working on. <laughs> the homosexuality, that was a lot easier. Yeah. Was it a still small voice that spoke to you? Was it, was there a light that came in the room? Like what was that real point of clarity? It was a still small voice and a realization that I knew better and had been telling myself that I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I became tired, you know, hold a basketball underwater for yeah. about six years, your arm is gonna get tired and finally yeah. that sucker is gonna come up with a gush. That's exactly yeah. what happened mm -hmm. to me that night.